Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today's reading is a bit different. I am going to do a pick a card but it's going to be dream interpretation. So we're going to be looking at explanations for why you've been having certain dreams, why certain things have been showing up in your dreams, if you've been having a recurring dream, anything along them lines we're going to look into today. So this could be for you, especially if you have been questioning a dream that you've been having or have one in mind while you're watching this, this could help you understand why you've been having that dream. So we've got three piles to choose from today. We have Ruby, Jade and Auburn. So I'm just going to give you a minute to tune in and pick which one most resonates with you. And as always, if you need more time, you can just pause the video. And we're going to start with Ruby. So if you chose Ruby, <laughs> why have you been having this particular dream? So <clears throat> this is kind of a fun one, I think, because I feel like there's something romantic about this particular dream you've been having or something heavily linked to your emotions, but I do feel like it's your emotions towards another person. Um, it may not be romantic in nature, it may just be, you know, you care for someone or you have, you know, you have a strong connection with someone, but I do feel like there's something about that that is showing up in your dreams. So, you have the High Priestess, first of all, and you have the Ace of Cups. <laughs> This screams to me secret feelings. <laughs> this is like screaming suppressed feelings. So with this High Priestess, particularly in this deck, the High Priestess is someone who's quite subtle, someone who doesn't give a lot away, someone who's quite mysterious and like I said in this deck, cloaked. So I feel like this is something to do with um, cloaked feelings, cloaked emotions. You may be purposefully holding back how you're feeling about a person and it's almost as if now it's overflowing and because it's overflowing, it's showing up in your dreams. Emotions often determine our dreams. You know, how we're feeling, what we're thinking about. Obviously, that's going to have an effect on our dreams, at least some of the time. And I feel like for you, it's almost like you, there's just, I feel like there's someone that you really admire or like, love, you know, someone who you can't stop thinking about or someone that really stirs up your emotions. I think in a good way for the most part, but obviously... <laughs> If someone's having that impact on you, that can still be quite uncomfortable, even if it's good emotions. So you also got trapped here. <laughs> now I want to I want to show you what I'm seeing because obviously in this card there's a tiger. <laughs> it was giving me that impression of, you know, when you're really hungry and you see someone eating something that looks amazing and all you want to do is eat what they're eating, it, it's giving me that kind of impression, but it's a metaphor. So it's more so that you might have a lot of passion for someone or there's someone that you'd really like to talk to or get to know more or spend time with, but for whatever reason you can't or you feel like you can't because of this trapped energy. You know, there's this feeling of, I want to get to that, but I can't. It's on the other side of this, this, this gate, this prison, this, whatever it is, this door that's locked. It's unavailable. There's something that's unavailable to you or you feel like it's unavailable to you, but that doesn't stop you from wanting it. You know, I'm looking at this, <laughs> these tiger, <laughs> this tiger's eyes are like red. And I don't think that, well, they're more orangey than red. I, and I don't mean that in an evil way, it's more coming across as like the passion, you know? It's almost like, I just want that food, you know? I just want 
that over there because it looks really good to me. And it's almost like wanting what you can't have in some respects, which may make it more desirable to you. So there could be many reasons for that. You may feel like there's too much of a distance between you and this person. You may feel like this person's unavailable because they're in a relationship. You may be in a relationship that, that there's a blockage somewhere. You may just feel like this person wouldn't have interest in you. You may feel like for whatever reason, you just can't get to them. And that's why it's showing up in your dreams, because it's almost like it's on your mind so much, or there's a lot of desire there, and there's a lot of intrigue and curiosity. Curiosity kills the cat, right? <laughs> but it feels like there's this sense of, I just want to get to that. I just want to have that. And I also think it's a bit of temptation, because again, if we're going to use food as the metaphor, it's almost like, you know, when you're trying to be healthy, but then, you know, I don't know, someone makes a cake or something and it smells really good. And you're like, oh, I could just eat a piece of that cake. But in your mind, you're kind of going, I shouldn't because I'm trying to be really good right now. <laughs> it feels like that. But again, a metaphor more so for relationships than food. If this relates to you on a food level, then that <laughs> that might also be true and might also explain why it's coming up so much. But I think it's more of a metaphor. You know, I want that over there, but I just don't think I should have it. Or I don't think that would be a good idea. Or I feel like I can't have it. It's almost like blocking yourself off. You know, you're, you're <sighs> limiting yourself or you're you're stopping yourself from going after what it is that you want because some part of you, like your mind, is telling you it's not a good idea. So your heart could be saying, I really want this, go for it. And your head is saying, this is stupid, don't do this. <laughs> and they're clashing and it's creating these dreams. And it, there's something, I feel like there's something really, really loving or passionate or affectionate about these dreams. I'm seeing that pop up everywhere in your reading as well because look at these colours, kind of very romantic colours and this image here, you know, it's kind of a romantic setting. So I feel like there, there is something romantic about the dreams that you're having, um, but it's almost like it's you may feel like it's making it harder for you because it's almost like your dreams are playing out scenarios that you don't feel like would take place in reality. Um, and with this heart-mind union here, again, there's something quite romantic about the image. You know, it's like sunsets and <laughs> the ocean. And I feel like, you know, in some cases it could be engagements you know I'm just thinking ruby and jewels and jewelry it could be you know kind of having a, a certain kind of life with someone that you're not actually with so there's that fantasy element to it as well so there is a block somewhere and it's almost like it could feel like when you've had dreams like that that when you wake up it's almost like you're you crash back down into reality and the blockages are there again. And whatever's taken place in your dream, in this like romantic fantasy driven dream, hasn't actually happened in reality. And, and so it's playing with your emotions a little bit, but it's because those emotions are already there, right? That these dreams are happening in the first place. So I do feel like this is a lot to do with secret feelings, suppressed emotions. I think if you're wanting to stop these dreams, then you need to, you need an outlet for these emotions. You need to get them off your chest. So, you, so it, it might mean telling the person that you're having these dreams about. But if you, if that doesn't feel like the right thing to do, given the circumstances, then it might just be a case of writing them down talking to a friend or a family member, you know, just giving yourself an outlet for them might prevent the dreams or stop the dreams from happening because they won't all be stored within you. But I do feel like it, it's almost like your feelings are in the closet, you know, your feelings are, tra are trapped, your feelings are trapped. 
you know, your feelings are stuck. They're, they're stuck within you because you may feel like there's nowhere to place those feelings. There's nowhere for them to go. There's no one you can share that with or the person you want to share that with you can't for whatever reason. But I feel like it, you may have had these feelings for a long time. It may be built up, built up energy and it's overflowing and that's why it's infiltrating your sleep because it's your most vulnerable time and it's all coming out when you're at your most vulnerable but it's almost like this cycle now because if it's not it, it's actually intensifying the emotion because you're having the dreams you know you're having the feelings in the daytime and you know they come and go then they're coming out in your sleep as well and it's the first thing that you then think about in the morning and it's starting the cycle all over again. So I would say that although this is quite a sweet reading, it may also be something that's bothering you or something that you'd like to stop. Um, because it's hard being emotional, you know, and it's hard feeling intense emotion, no matter what that emotion is. And you may just want it to calm down a little bit. So I feel like an outlet for those emotions is the, the right move for you. Just so it's not all stored inside anymore. And it might just prevent this cycle. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one there. But <laughs> that was quite a cute one. But I really hope that resonated. And I'm going to move on to pile number two. Bye. Hi pal two and welcome to your reading. So if you picked Jade, this is your pile. So what is the meaning behind your dream? Okay, so I feel like first of all, you could have been having dreams about nature, being outside, or at least the environment that you're, you're in in these dreams could be outside surrounded by trees, surrounded by water, somewhere quiet, somewhere where you can think clearly. Now, if you've been having a lot of dreams where you're outside, I feel like the reason for that is because this, I feel like you're trying to create a lot in your life right now. I feel like you're trying to manifest. You're trying to take a lot of action. You've got two knights here. Knights are you know, they are the representation of action. And I feel like, I feel like that's you. You're trying to take action or you're taking a lot of action. You could be quite busy or you're keeping busy. You're trying to make things happen for yourself. It could be money oriented or just, you know, um, you've got goals, you're driven. There's things that you're trying to achieve and you're trying to make happen now. So if that's the case, I feel like the reason why you're having dreams about being outside in nature where it's quiet, quiet, you know, areas that you would expect to experience a lot of peace and quiet and, and not a lot of noise and not be distracted by everything else in the world, like a forest, right? Like a lakeside or the beach, somewhere where you can feel calm the reason why you're having dreams like that is because A, that's what you need and B, they're trying to slow you down. I feel like a lot of you are trying to move too fast. You're trying to make things happen before it's the right time. So you're being blocked and that could be stirring up some frustration, but it could also be causing you some confusion, you know, because of it's like, well, I'm, I'm trying to take action here, but... I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. It's almost like running on a treadmill, you know, I'm putting in all this effort, but I'm not actually moving anywhere. And I feel like there's a timing issue with what you're trying to create, which I know is the most annoying answer, but there is, there's a timing issue. You're trying to make something happen before it's ready, before it's meant for you. And so you're being slowed down or you're being encouraged at least to slow down. Not only that, but obviously you're being encouraged to spend some time outdoors as well and outside, particularly if you've found yourself to be cooped up a lot lately. You're being encouraged to go outside, take a walk, 
you know, if you live near a beach, go to the beach. Somewhere that you feel at peace, somewhere that you feel you can receive a lot of quiet. Sorry, one second. Sorry about that. Um, I'm accident prone this week, so <laughs> I shouldn't be left alone <laughs> ever. <laughs> right. Um, so as I was saying, you need some quiet space. You're being asked to slow down so that you can think things through carefully. Because I think at the minute you run risk of making some impulsive decisions or impulsive choices that could lead you you know, not down the wrong path, but down a road that you might want to turn around and come back the other way, you know, um, basically make decisions where you end up regretting those decisions, or even if you don't regret them, you just end up back where you started. So in order to avoid that, I think that you're being asked to slow down now and give something time to become clear in your head and in your mind but also give something time to develop to grow um i think you're trying to run before you can walk right now and the thing is is that even though you've got two nights here that are action oriented they are the slowest nights in tarot you know the knight of pentacles is very much a planner before you know he takes action he's not the knight of swords the knight of swords runs in jumps very impulsive, thinks about the consequences later. The Knight of Pentacles really sits down, plans things out carefully, takes things step by step, doesn't rush anything, and he's often known as the most successful knight in tarot because of that. And then the Knight of Cups is sort of one step up from the Knight of Pentacles. You know, it's it's really it's really allowing yourself time. And I think that that might be something that you're struggling to do right now. And so it's showing up in your dreams. It's saying slow down, you know, if you're dreaming about holidays that you've been on or holidays that you might want to go on, you know, vacation spots that you've been to that are showing up randomly in your dreams now or places in your area where you live that you like to go to when you need to relax or need some me time. The reason for that is, is just this, you know, it's, slow down, take some time out for you, clear your head. Because I think that something about your mind right now is quite scattered and it may be because you've got so much going on or because you're running before you can walk. So it's almost like my work life, my family life, my home life, me time, you know, my romantic life. There there could be lots of different directions that you're being pulled in right now. And because your mind is so scattered, it's not giving yourself an easy time to have a clear idea of what's next for you you know it's almost ironic it's not in in your case it's the more action that you take the more confused you're going to be about where you're going sometimes the best thing that we can do is nothing is stop take a minute take a breath allow things to unfold in a more natural way as opposed to us enforcing that and I think it's because at this stage you've taken enough action to get things moving but now it's time to just take a step back and pause it's almost like you need to pause and (laughs) you actually got tiger here as well now, this tiger, a tiger image came up in the first pile as well. So I'm not sure if this is also kind of a, a general message for the reading today, but it's divine timing. <laughs> Good things come to those who wait. And that is true in some circumstances. Obviously, if all you ever do in life is wait and you never take action, then that's a different matter. But when you have taken action, and you are taking action, and you go a bit overboard with that, you can actually stall yourself as opposed to keep on moving forward. So they're asking you to be a bit patient right now, be patient with the process, be patient with yourself, and allow things to unfold more naturally. And that's why your dreams are showing up in the way that they are, because it it wants you to slow down, it wants you to take a break. It's almost like because you're not taking a break in your day to day, you're given that break in your sleep. It's almost like you're given that time out 
and that peaceful energy in your sleep instead because you need to get it somehow. But the ideal is that you take some of that dream and make it into a reality. So you go to your favorite place outside that makes you feel most relaxed. You go to that forest, you go to that wood, you go to that lake, you go to that reservoir, you go to that beach, whatever it is for you, you go to that place that is outside to help you calm down, to help you relax, to help you find some peace of mind and to, to be comfortable with the slow pace of things because that will naturally happen in life at some point and, and it's about being comfortable with that and knowing that there's purpose to it and that it is happening for a reason and there's still something to be gained within those times. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one there, but I really hope that was helpful. And I am going to move on to the final pile. Bye. Hi guys, and welcome to pile three. So this is for those of you that chose Auburn. So if you chose Auburn, this is your reading. Now, I want to start out by saying that this reading, despite the images being very similar... These readings seem to be opposite in their messages today. I told Jade Pyle that they need to slow down and, you know, hold off taking action right now. That divine timing is at play. Auburn, it feels very much the opposite, that you need to take action. Now, I'm going to get more specific than that, obviously. But what was interesting to me was that it's almost like going from summer to autumn, you know? It's that change of seasons that I think comes into this message today. It's almost like you're in two, two piles are in two different seasons of their lives right now. So they need two different approaches. So <clears throat> you got the three of wands with the king of wands. So a lot of fire energy and makes sense. That's a lot to do with action and taking action. Now, I feel like it's a bit of a strange one, this, because I feel like in your day-to-day -day life, I feel like you've been holding your tongue, that you've not been saying things that you have been thinking, that you've been feeling. You've not been speaking up for yourself, or you've not been speaking up when things have been bothering you, or things have been getting to you. So you've been holding back. You've been very observant. That's what I'm getting. You've been very observant. You know, you've been sat there just kind of watching people do what they're doing, say what they're saying, but you haven't really been responding or reacting. You've just been taking it in and taking your time. And I see it again with this, with this cat energy. You can see this cat and the cat's kind of almost squinting, but it's like... It's, it's almost, it's a very wise energy, I feel, almost like I'm going to absorb what they're saying, I'm going to absorb what I'm seeing here, and I'm going to take my time before I respond, which is a very wise approach to take, and not everyone does that. Most of us just react in the moment and then regret it later, right? But if you can observe, process, and then respond... It's a very wise approach. However, I feel like you might be taking too long to respond, that you're taking too long to say what you think and say how you feel. So there's a lot of waiting here, a lot of waiting, just watching and waiting, watching and waiting. And I feel like this has a lot to do with, well, I don't know, this, this can go in multiple ways but I feel like it's likely to do with your relationships in your life um but it could be goals and ambitions that you have as well but there's there's disappointment here so I'm wondering in your dreams whether you remember them or not I don't know why I said that in yours I've not said that to anyone else but I'm wondering in your dreams if you're speaking up in your dreams and the response that you're getting from other people isn't very nice or isn't what you would want or what you would expect. And because of your dreams showing you that in your reality, 
you're not speaking up, you're not saying what you think, because if it, it's almost like you're using your dreams as a bit of a compass, it's like, well, in my dream, when I said this to this person, it didn't go down very well, and so I'm not going to do that in reality, because I feel like it's a bit of a hint not to. However, if that's the case, if it's something along them lines, then I feel like you're being asked to not take your dreams so literally and and to be aware that your dreams are a mixture of all kinds of different things, you know, they're emotions, suppressed emotions, they are things that you've seen throughout your day, they're messages, they are, you can have little, sort of small premonitions sometimes about things, but I feel like in this case, it's fear. It's almost like fear of what would happen if I did speak up for myself. Because if I've, I've said this, and in my dream when I've said it, I've gotten a response I didn't like. So I'm not going to do it. So it's almost like showing you what your fear is as opposed to what would actually happen. But again, inspired action. So you're, you're very much being asked to speak up and make some noise. <laughs> right? You're being asked to make some noise. And I think it would be quite surprising to some people around you because I think you've been very just subdued almost. You've just been very, you've, you've very calm and very collected, but it's almost that kind of quiet calm that makes people nervous. You know, you know, when you're, you're angry or you're raging inside but on the surface, you're just quiet. And that can make people feel way more uncomfortable than shouting and screaming and yelling, you know? I feel like that's you. And I'm not saying that you're necessarily angry, as opposed, you know, disappointed might be more your energy, but it is, it's that, it's that phrase, isn't it? That we all hate. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed, you know? <laughs> that phrase kills us. So it's, that's the energy that I think you've been in. You haven't been responding to things in the way that I think people expected you to. And it's made, it's put them on edge. It's almost like, okay, well, they've not, they've not freaked out. They've not had a go at me. They've not yelled. They've not really shown any emotion. I don't know what's going on with them, but I can tell something's going on under the surface. It's almost like people can see that this, the, the cogs are turning within you, but you've not actually revealed where you stand or what what you're feeling or what you're going through or what your reaction to what's going on around you actually is. And that's put people on edge. But I feel like you're being asked to now speak up, say what you think. And the the image I was getting was almost something out of a film or a TV show. You know those moments where someone comes home and they walk in their door and all the lights are off in their house and they turn the lights on and someone sat in their living room with, in this case, a cup of tea. <laughs> and it's almost like, surprise, <laughs> bet you didn't expect to see me here. It, it's that kind of message of, I feel like when you do speak up, it will be a surprise to whoever you need to speak up to. Whatever you need to say will be a surprise to the recipient. Um, and it will be unexpected, I think, because whoever it is that you need to speak up to, you've gone a very long time not saying anything about whatever this is. And it could be a number of things. I do think it's something that you're disappointed about or something that you, you know took your time to really think about before you spoke up about. So I feel like your dreams, in your dreams you could be having almost like a play-by-play -play of these conversations, but it's almost putting you off from wanting to take action. I think there's something as well about perhaps feeling like you're the one with the power if you don't speak up, because people could be waiting for you to say something and I don't know what this is about I don't I just feel like people are waiting on your response and so I feel like because you know that you've been holding your tongue you haven't been saying anything and it's almost like that keeping your power 
but you are very much being encouraged to make some noise now and to speak up and to say what it is that you need to say that you have been waiting to say. I'm going to clarify this one as well because it's really interesting and it's really, really different and I don't know what it's about, but um, I can tell that you've been really observant and you have been biding your time. It's quite strategic. I feel like you might be being quite strategic about whatever this is. You're not rushing in, you've not been impulsive, you've been waiting. Waiting for your moment, I think. Yeah, it's almost like people have been waiting for you to react. I'm seeing, again, I'm kind of seeing it here. It's almost like this person is over here like, why aren't you reacting? And you're just there like reading your newspaper, just like, I'm, I'm not, it's not the right time. You're having your feelings, but you're not reacting to them. You're not letting them take over and take control. It's almost like, I, I almost kind of get like, there's this, almost like this foolish behaviour that someone's been playing in your life, or showing you in your life. It's almost like they've been performing in a way, but in a really silly way. Like, a, I'm just going to do things to try and get this person to react, but it's not been working. And so it's almost like this person's now on pins because it's like, I feel like they're going to blow at some point and I don't know when that's going to be. Yeah, because <laughs> the cat, again, I don't know why cats are significant here. But they are. And there's a cat here and the cat is looking up at the fool like, I can see what you're doing. But I don't know what you expect me to do about it. I don't, I don't know what you think I'm going to do about it. I'm just going to watch you be a fool. I'm just going to watch you, you know, dig your own hole. You know, it feels a bit like that. And the disappointment could actually be the other person in that case. The disappointment could actually be, you know, you disconnecting or being disconnected. You have an awareness of something, but you you aren't reacting to it. It's you know it's it is that thing, isn't it? Where what they say to children, you know, just don't react, and they won't have anything. They won't don't give them ammunition, you know. And I feel like you've not been giving someone ammunition, and so they're confused and also nervous. But, like I said, there's encouragement here to speak up for yourself because sometimes, although not speaking up can be powerful, if it's done for too long and for too many different experiences and run-ins that you've had with someone, eventually that can make someone think that they can do anything and they'll get away with it you know? So there's got to be a middle ground that's found here where you know the right moments to speak up and you know when to pull back and not react. Both kind of have to exist in order for you to find balance. So Kat actually says, speak your truth, have strength, faith and conviction in your voice. It has never been more needed. So yeah, it's the right time for you to speak up and to say what it is that you need to say. And I think it will be a surprise to whoever you are speaking up to because they won't be expecting it because I think you've been observing and quiet for a while. So when it comes to cat, It says the cat shines a light on all the ways you communicate to friends, family or work colleagues. 
She will bring clarity and help you find your voice if you feel you have lost it. The cat helps you communicate with higher beings and spirits, opening and working on your throat chakra. So yeah, definitely your throat chakra has been closed, but I think you've done that on purpose. The cat brings a balanced perspective, courage, independence and strength. She's all things mystical and magical, an ancient protector of many earthly civilizations, especially during ancient Egyptian times where she was worshipped through Bast Bastet, the goddess of protection. You are being asked to bring the spirit animal's energy into your life, refresh and energize your body with the sun's energy. So yeah, I feel like there is that outside theme again. So clearly, collectively, too much time inside, need to be outside. Perhaps, you know, it could be one of them situations where you think, right, I'm going to go for a walk, clear my head, think about what I'm going to say, and then I'm going to go back and have this conversation with, I don't know, my mum, my dad, my partner, my friend, whoever it is, my work colleague. I just, I'm going to go for that walk, clear my head, being outside will help, and then I'm going to have that conversation. And I'm going to be calm and I'm going to be clear and I'm going to make my point without it becoming dramatic. So I feel like that's going to be the best way you can approach this. But I do feel like something needs to be dealt with. I feel like something needs to be said. Something's gone on too long. And you're the one that can put a stop to it by speaking up. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. But I really hope that was helpful. It was really nice talking to you all again. And I will speak to you again soon. Bye.